Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder All Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about an upcoming July cooldown, as well as a look at the extended outlook. So if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, this is July the 16th, your overall satellite view is as a whole. And what you're looking at here, we've got some a lot of heavier rains and uh, par por northern portions of uh, Oklahoma, as well as southern portions of uh, Kansas this morning. That's all spread out on a boundary line that's extended into the Ohio Valley. That's actually fishtailing a little bit of the instability into uh, northern parts of uh, North Texas this morning. But I think that'll actually send out a little boundary uh, this afternoon and spread some precipitation into uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We also have a feature out here in the open Atlantic uh, it's a non-tropical low. Uh, the, the National Hurricane Center has a, you know, like a 10% chance of this form and it's not going to form. It's just going to continue uh, moving off into the northeast. Uh, we've got some instability off a tropical wave down here in the Caribbean. It's fairly dry uh, back behind it, but all that moisture will start lifting northwestward as we go throughout the next several days. And then this feature down here in the Pacific, this is actually what they, what's now Major Hurricane Felicia. This is now a, a pretty bona fide hurricane. It's 115 miles an hour. It's expected to go at 125 miles an hour. The good thing about Felicia is it is out in the open waters. And it's continuing to move westward towards Hawaii. But you can definitely see as it gets into these cooler waters out here in the open waters of near Hawaii, It'll quickly dissipate into a tropical storm and then probably more or less falling apart before it reaches uh, reaches Hawaii. So it should not be uh, any impact to land. And so we can officially say, bye, Felicia. <laughs> so, so let's take a look at Felicia now. I mean, it's pretty ominous. I mean, this is a pretty bona fide hurricane. It's got a very symmetrical eye to it. Like I mentioned, the good thing is this is out in the open waters. Uh, but this is a pretty active uh, NJO. This will actually tra be traversing across from the Pacific into the Atlantic uh, over the next week or two. So even though it's fairly quiet in the Atlantic now, I do expect it to start picking up as we get into August because that NJO is going to be moving into a little bit more favorable environment. And this type of atmosphere will be sh shifted over and onto the Atlantic side. So Let's get into the uh, details as far as the U.S. goes. Let's look at the hazard map. Uh, one thing you'll actually notice is the, the the ridge and the excessive heat warnings and watches is not nearly as dominant as it has been over the last several weeks. And a big noticeable shift in that uh, heat is now centered and uh, over Idaho into Montana into portions of uh, Wyoming. We've got some flash flood watches down here in Arizona where the uh, monsoon is really active. It's going to continue uh, to remain active. There's your flood watches this morning. That's the feature I highlighted at the beginning of the video with those heavier rains. And that fish tails into the Ohio Valley uh, with some uh, you know, flood watches in parts of northern Ohio. Uh, this morning so as we take a look at the precipitation for today yeah you can definitely see right along that boundary here that's your heavier setup so southern illinois uh, portions of uh, in, uh, indiana and ohio here you could pick up several inches of rain today and right here along uh, down here in the eastern parts of oklahoma filtering into far northern parts of north texas you are going to be uh, seeing some rain today in parts of uh, louisiana mississippi and alabama and there's the active uh, monsoon into Arizona and just sporadic amounts as you get uh, further off, further to the ridge, the closer you get to the ridge, the drier uh, you're going to be. So as we transition to Saturday, that boundary just shifts a little bit further off into the southeast. Uh, that'll put the setup uh, more or less over portions of uh, Arkansas now into you know Kentucky, into Tennessee, get into portions of uh, West Virginia and Virginia as well as uh, Pennsylvania with some heavier rains starting to filter in into upstate New York, uh, getting into uh, you know Boston, getting Massachusetts, Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire, and portions of Maine here. And along these coastal regions in uh, Rhode Island, yes, you'll, you'll pick up some heavier rain. And even down to Florida where that instability, where that little tropical wave 
that I that I highlighted at the beginning of the video is still sending impulses of uh, showers and thunderstorm activity. But that's something that you're kind of used to in Florida with these you know daily afternoon pop up thunderstorms. It'll rain for 30 minutes and then the sun will come out and it'll be you know really hot and humid. Uh, but that's kind of what you're in in for you know in in into uh, Florida. But yeah, where that ridge is going to be, and as it shifts, and as it shifts, you'll have that uh, rain sh rain showers uh, away from that away from the ridge. As we transition into uh, Sunday, you can see the boundary shifts a little bit further off into the southeast. So now the the greater rain chances are going to be in northern parts of Louisiana, uh, central parts of Mississippi and Alabama, getting into central. Uh, Tennessee here, Eastern Tennessee, now going to be on the outskirts on the East Coast of uh, North Carolina, and as well as uh, Virginia here. And this will lift up into uh, Jersey as well, with some of the heavier rains over the central U.S. As this as this uh, jet stream will start lifting up, you'll have a, a, a some heavier rains break out into N Nebraska, as well as Kansas, getting into uh, Oklahoma, with our cold front that's going to be on the table as we go into monday so as we go into monday that ridge of high pressure will just continue shifting off a little bit further off into uh montana and to the start getting in packed in the dakotas that'll filter in a cold front and push it down further to the south you can see drier air back behind it and so uh, ahead of it it's got a very warm unstable air mass and that's where the heavier rains are going to start picking up as we get into Monday, you can see this on the uh, water vapor in imagery. This is pretty prevalent as we go into the late afternoon hours on Monday, transitioning into uh, Tuesday. And there's your temperatures with uh, with the ridge slowly shifting as the week progresses, slowly shifting away from the coast. And it'll be over in, uh, Idaho, especially start creeping into uh, Montana, get into the Dakotas with those 15 to 20 degrees below average temperatures, pretty, pretty, uh, you know, above, uh, above average temperatures, you know, well to the north, above average temperatures out, out ahead of it. But down below, you'll have that cooler air where that, where that cold front is with those 10, 15, and at times when it rains and during the afternoon hours, yes, you could see some of these anomalies hit 20 degrees below average, but that's just in because you know you have a lot of clouds and rain cover at that time as soon as the rain stops the sun will come out and they heat up the atmosphere another five to ten degrees but a lot of these high temperatures will be in the 80s which is easily uh 10 degrees below average coming up for your day on a uh, monday so as we you know as we go into monday where that cold front is and it's a slow moving front i mean these fronts uh, it's pretty rare to even talk about a cold front this time of year and and these don't really get that far south but this one is it's got a lot of push to it in the upper atmosphere so it's going to it's going to filter all the way down into north texas on monday spreading some heavier rain very unsettled as the cap just erodes and thunderstorms erupt I'm not really expecting too much severe weather, but a lot of these could contain some gusty winds, some lightning, and some very heavy rain if you're under this with uh, you know water precipitation values up to one to two inches per hour. So you're talking some pretty heavy rain in a short amount of time. And I think that's what we're on uh, in for as we go into uh, Monday with those heavier rains transitioning into the Dallas Worth area and to uh, parts of East Texas. And that first boundary will be off the coast of the Carolinas by then. So as we go into that Tuesday time frame, yeah, there's the ridge. It's still pretty, pretty much predominant as you go into uh, you know Montana as well as the Dakotas. It starts to really start to be centered over more or less uh, Montana and, and parts of the Dakotas. But underneath, yeah, you've got those well cooler temperatures of those 10, 15, 20 degree below average anomalies popping up in times and then all the way down to the south. So it's kind of the opposite of what you would expect uh, this time of year. But that's the pattern we've been uh, faced with as of late. And I really do feel like it just continues. So as we go into uh, Tuesday, the 20th, there's your heavier rains will be more, more or less centered over North Texas, Eastern Texas, Central Texas. So some pretty good rains. Uh, coming up for Monday and Tuesday uh, for Texas along that cold front uh, as it slowly shifts further down to the south as we go throughout the week. And then that'll push the rains along the coastal regions as well. And that first boundary will be off the coast 
uh, by then. But the active monsoon continues to remain active in the Four Corners region, especially in the Arizona and portions of uh, New Mexico. So that continues to remain active and you have lesser amounts as you go into Colorado as well as uh, Utah. You know, going to the day on Tuesday, there's as we go into Wednesday, there's the dominant high pressure, there's the ridge. Notice the coastal regions of Washington and Oregon, parts of Northern California, as the ridge or as the ridge shifts a little bit further off into the interior regions, that brings some just what you would really kind of expect this time of year, just more or less average temperatures, which has been completely the opposite. So you do get a reprieve from the heat and much of the coastal regions into Washington and Oregon and on more or less into the entire state by the time we get into uh, that Wednesday time frame. But yeah, where the clouds and the, the storms and the unsettled weather, that'll transition into much of Texas as we get into the day on uh, Wednesday with highs in the 80s continuing. And that just shifts the rain just a little bit further south as we go into Wednesday with those heavier rains shifting all the way down into uh, Del Rio area and uh, San Antonio and Austin, getting along the coastal regions of Houston, Corpus. Yeah, you'll start to see that heavier rain shifting into southern portions of Louisiana, getting into Florida by then, where, where that cold front more or less falls. That's where the instability is going to be back behind it. It's fairly dry. And again, the monsoon, the monsoon continues uh, to remain active. And there's your temperature anomalies as we go into Thursday. I think the ridge just starts to deepen as we go into next week. And it's going to be parked over Montana and to uh, North, North Dakota, South Dakota, and portions of Wyoming. We're talking triple-digit heat out there with a very monster, very big monster ridge developing uh, out of that region. But again, underneath, you got all that cooler air where that's clouds and the thunderstorms activity continues to remain active. You'll stay below average for much of uh, next week. And then there's your rain as we go into Thursday. Not as heavy because the cold front starts to uh, kind of fade by then, but you'll still have those isolated and scattered thunderstorms around for portions of the south you'll have some more instability coming in with a little boundary that's filtering in into portions of uh, wisconsin and michigan here and that'll uh, impact uh, oh, the ohio valley again this area has been hit with very heavy rain and especially in the northeast and so i do expect uh, more heavy rain you know coming for your for that region and so there's the ridge by friday that just kind of parks itself over the Dakotas with that dangerously hot temperatures of 100 degree plus easily coming up. So that's a, a big ridge developing, but it's gonna be centered over the Dakotas by then, which not as extreme on the, the outskirts of this, but you can definitely see pretty rare to see below average anomalies in the Four Corners regions by uh, July 23rd, but that, you know, with the monsoon alive and well, uh, it's gonna be eating away at that drought uh, pretty good because we'll have consistent rains happening over an extended period of time. And I think that just continues to remain active. There is your uh, rains prospects for the next week. As uh, far as totals go, you can definitely see the graph here on the left. Uh, that's the multi-inch rains, the darker the reds, that's, uh, you know, two to four inches. So yeah, two to four inches is pretty pretty uh, common into parts of uh, North Texas, uh, you know, Eastern Texas, you know, parts of uh, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Southern Arkansas, and then up here in the Ohio Valley, you know, two to four inches, you know, over that seven day time span. And yes, you'll start to creep, uh, get some rain at least in the interior regions of California. And you notice up here in the Pacific Northwest. As the ridge continues to shift interior, you'll start to creep in some of that precipitation. So I do feel the pattern is changing for you guys, but it's probably not going to happen until probably as we go into August. And I do feel the rains are going to be coming back uh, for the Pacific Northwest as we go into that August time frame. But before then, here's your setup as we go beyond what I showed you. So here's the latest uh, 6 to 10 temperature outlook from that 21st through the 25th uh, time frame you can definitely see below average anomalies continue to remain for the south where that ridge continues to shift a little bit further off into the interior regions that's where you'll have your your uh, 
your hottest air and then yes the interior regions get a respite uh, from the heat as we have a little bit of a cool down in the northeast as uh, well there's your rain prospects for that time frame uh, where the ridge is it's pretty much dry where the trough is it's wet i mean there's that's as simple as it gets you know where the clouds and the rain and where that's going to be it's july so if it's cloudy and if it's raining temps are normally going to be below average where it's where it's clear and there's there's you know the soil is drier and it's that's the areas you're going to be able to heat up a little bit faster as well so that's the setup for then but you know as we go into that eight to, eight to 14 time, uh, day time frame notice the ridge continues to shift a little bit further off into the interior regions parked over the dakotas now it'll now will be creeping in into portions of minnesota and getting into portions of wisconsin as well and as the ridge shifts into the interior regions It'll add a little bit further off into, uh, it'll allow this to push further off into California with those below average anomalies. So now California will start feeling the effects, not just of that heat. Now actually the start feeling these, some of these below average temperatures, uh, what uh, much of Texas has been experiencing, at, you know, as of late. And there's, there's the rain prospects as we get into that 23rd and uh, 29th time frame. There's the, the ridge to the north, fairly dry under that ridge, and then not as heavy uh, as a precipitation as we get into that you know 23rd to the 29th uh, time frame of July. So hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video and definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.